Who would ever thought that there was a time when buying lingerie was extremely uncomfortable, and you couldn't just walk into the nearest mall in your neighborhood? Well, it did exist in Victorian times, but that was until a man came and redefined how both men and women shop for lingerie. His name is Roy Raymond. But how did it really go from selling menswear to being the major founder of a multi-billion dollar empire? Well, stick around until the end of this video to find out the secret of Victoria's Secret. The Man Behind Victoria's Secret Victoria's Secret and the famous underwear models known as the Victoria's Secret Angels all started as a simple idea in the mind of Roy Raymond. He was just a regular guy with a Stanford MBA who wanted to buy some lingerie for his wife. However, it wasn't as comfortable as he wanted it to be. From the moment he stepped into the department store, he was surrounded by ugly floral print nightgowns under very harsh fluorescent lighting. Even the saleswomen, who were much older, looked at him like he was a pervert because it was quite rare at the time to have a man shopping for lingerie. Roy realized that this wasn't an experience he would want to get again, and then thought about the thousands of other men who wanted to do this for their wives but were seen as perverts. This was the birth of his great idea for a high-end place where men could shop easily for sexy lingerie with a decent level of privacy. At the time, the 30-year-old had about $40,000 in savings. He combined this with another $40,000 loan and together with his wife, set up the first ever Victoria's Secret store in California. The idea for the name was to reflect Victorian times, and he even set it up with the same style. As soon as you step into the small shopping mall in Palo Alto, you would be welcome with silk curtains, oriental rugs, and dark wood to give it all an air of respectability. But the focus was majorly on men. And it may not seem like a big deal today, but it was the late 70s. These kind of stores just didn't exist in the United States at the time as underwear was seen majorly as being about practicality and durability. In this era, it was all about function, not fun. And then Victoria's Secret came to change this. It took just five years for this store to change the way people saw sexy underwear. By that time, they had moved from having just one store at Palo Alto to creating three more in the Bay Area. With this came the diverse catalog that really captured the attention of customers. Raymond's store had the perfect outward appearance of success as sales were more than $4 million annually. But something wasn't right. It could have been mismanagement, but no one knew for sure back then why Victoria's Secret was close to bankruptcy despite the impressive annual revenue. Luckily, another businessman came to his rescue. How Leslie Wexner Saved Victoria's Secret Leslie Wexner was another businessman only a few miles from Roy Raymond. At the time, he was the famous owner of The Limited and would go on to add several other retail chains to its portfolio. But while he was still in his 20s, Leslie realized that career women were no longer fans of dresses. So he started in 1963 with a sportswear-only store, which grew to 188 by 1977. That was the year Roy opened Victoria's Secret and Leslie was already worth about $50 million. But this was also the time that Leslie was searching for a new brand to branch out to. Luckily, he came across Victoria's Secret while visiting one of his stores in San Francisco. This was a whole store filled with sexy lingerie and way different from regular stores in the United States. A few discussions with Roy revealed that his store was having issues, and Leslie was only too happy to buy the store and catalog for $1 million in 1982. He had already saw the huge potential in the store and went back to work on fixing it. Turns out that it wasn't really mismanagement that had Victoria's Secret in bankruptcy, but that it had appealed strictly to men. The target market was still meant to be for women after all, but Roy had only succeeded in making shopping uncomfortable for women while fixing the issue that men had with buying sexy lingerie. It was still all based on the idea that men would love to buy lingerie for their women, so the stores had everything to fit their taste, from the racy garments and leather sofas to the really dark colors. The problem was that men were not buying as much as he would like, and the ones that they bought for their women were considered unappealing and uncomfortable. Leslie quickly went to work to transform this part of the business, starting with spicing up standard supported bras with bright colors and even more attractive prints. Then he tackled the design of the store to give it a more 19th century boudoir look with more feminine colors. The plan was simple, make Victoria's Secret the one-stop shop for the sexiest women in the world to buy lingerie and then regular women could buy as well for a steep price tag. You could say what contributed majorly to the success of this plan was that it came through at a time when women were going through a sexual revolution. They were joining the workforce and wearing power suits, but still wanted to wear something sexy under all of this. 
A combination of the workplace revolution and sexual revolution meant that there was a lot of disposable income that women were willing to spend on bras rather than babies or planning weddings. With the catalog having a softer image for the woman than the previous racy pictures, Leslie was able to achieve balance. While the men enjoyed the catalogs, the women were buying his products. These women spent enough money to get Victoria's Secret into its years of amazing success. By 1995, they had more than 650 stores in the United States, with almost $2 billion in sales. But there was still something different about women's shopping habits at the time. They still didn't like the idea of spending too much on a fancier bra for regular use, so Victoria's Secret had to find that product that would be a perfect blend of beauty and function. They hit the mark in 1999 with Body by Victoria. It was padded soft, seamless, and luxurious. Women loved this bra, and it sold out within six weeks of launching. This was despite the price being more than twice the price of others in the store. The success of this line was the official start of the path to dominating the intimate apparel industry. They launched the Victoria's Secret annual fashion show that had millions of viewers and launched the careers of various supermodels, including Tyra Banks and Heidi Klum. Before long, it became a source of prestige to make purchases at Victoria's Secret. Roy Raymond's Bitter End Meanwhile, what about the man that started all this in the first place? Well, after Roy Raymond sold his company to Leslie, he stayed as president until 1984. He felt it was time to open up My Child's Destiny, a high-end children's retail company. However, this was never meant to be. Roy launched it with a terrible marketing strategy that didn't take into account the location with no foot traffic and only targeted wealthy parents. Just two years after creating the San Francisco-based brand, he was forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. He also got a divorce. You can imagine how tough it was to watch his next attempt at creating a company crumble to the ground alongside his marriage, while his first was already worth billions of dollars. Roy Raymond eventually jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge in 1993, and that was a tragic end of his life. Still, that doesn't take away the fact that the idea for Victoria's Secret is entirely his, and we may have to wait a few more years to have that sort of thing in the United States if he didn't try to buy his wife some lingerie on that fateful day. There's a lesson to be learned here. While Roy had the genius idea to make buying sexy underwear possible without feeling of shame, he wasn't willing to write out the idea to see how far it can go. It's one thing to have a good idea and another thing to have a good idea with great follow through. Now you know the story of the man behind Victoria's Secret. And that's a wrap. What do you think about this brand? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? Well, we're always posting amazing content like this. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.